so since you're probably a new player and you probably don't know how to get the currency to buy the perks for the characters, I will first show you how to get some currency before I show you the tier list. So basically you go onto your friends list and click on recruit players. On top you can see your own refill code. You can copy that and post that on the refill code section on the discord server. From the same channel you can also get the refill codes of others. It does not matter what refill code you're picking. So after you copied it you can go into your game and check the invited player reward section and on the very bottom you can enter the code and click on OK. Then you will get a notification for a successful redeem instantly after. Another way to make quick currency is to watch the tutorials. There are enough tutorials for you to get up to 600 of the in-game cash and they don't even take long so it's easy money. Doing the daily missions also gives you around 150 to 500 extra cash points. So the current way to level your characters is in my opinion pretty boring. You just buy the enhanced cores in the black market and if you bought enough you can go onto your character and go to upgrade and just level them for how many enhanced cores you bought. I think they should rework that system to make it a little more interactive or interesting since it's just a kind of extra currency that you buy to buy something else again. So if you have chosen what perk you want to take you need to know that it's not necessary to level your character to level 6. Level 6 just gives you another skin which some of them are good and some are like kinda not so good looking in my opinion like the godfather skin does not look that nice for example so you actually only have to level your character to level 4 this is when you unlock the teachable or the shareable perk for the character you can spend 32 enhanced cores on a character and that's enough to get a character to level 4 i'm not sure about that data since it's a long time ago and they might have changed it but this is how I remember it. You can buy up to 80 at a time, so I guess that's the m amount of enhanced cores you need to buy for your character to reach level 6. Before I really start with the tier list, I will say that it's an opinion based tier list. So you might have a different view on this if you're a like a more experienced extractor or even watcher. I'm covering both in this tier list, so if you think different, please let me know in the comments, because I'm actually interested of others' opinions. One more thing, I made this video over almost six days, so I had different times where I recorded my voice, so it might seem a little weird that my voice changes throughout the video. With that said, have fun with the video. So the first perk is Persistent. It basically makes your max HP loss in the digital form slower by 50%. As you can see in the gameplay I'm showing, in the time you would lose 6 HP without the perk, you are only losing 3 max HP in the digital form uh, with the perk, which is actually pretty nice if you uh, don't are being healed instantly. Still, even though it's it's quite okay, I put it in the D tier since they're just way better perks to pick up and there's almost never a reliable way of this perk being consistent. I've got an idea though how to make it better. If the devs would buff it in a way that it would maybe increase your movement speed even faster, um, your HP loss would be even slower and your building speed for the digital worlds would be higher. You could just run around the map after being executed and put up all the digital walls you destroyed through the fight or like even put up some better ones that your team did not get before or even destroy the ones that the killer made during the chase since 
especially in the late game where there are only three left um, or two this often becomes a problem that not enough players put up the walls and it gets really hard so but till then this perk still for me stays in D tier the next perk is the memory module from shadow it basically makes you able to see one usable warehouse the problem is that if you work on that data warehouse the perk becomes worthless the only good side to it is after you completely finish a warehouse a new one will be shown to you and you know exactly where to go like that's like the only thing I can see positive about this thing the only reason I did not put it in F tier is because I want to keep the F tier for the perks that have to be 100% reworked and should not be buffed in any way so I put it in E tier the only way it could be buffed is it would make you see every data warehouse and also the progress on the data warehouse and that way you could prevent the killer from getting a 3 gen strategy early on already which is also not gonna happen with good players right they can place their spawning locations in a way that it gets really hard for the killer but like for newer players this could be kind of useful but till it's not getting buffed it stays in E tier and will stay there if not worse so next up we have godfather's perk called street spirit it basically gives you 10% of your max HP as HP while being in the digital form unless you have less than 15 max HP points cause if you just low on HP you're just going to not get this perk to work and this is actually when it would matter so as you can see in the gameplay it just heals you for like 3 HP like it gives you a 3 HP back and if you're max HP and you're HP collide you will be revived without uh, needing another person which in itself is a pretty nice idea the thing is though you lose so much max HP in the meantime you're just a one hit down like the killer just has to kind of look in your direction and you're dead already so a way to buff street spirit would be to make it after you lose 5 a max HP while being in the digital form you can res revive yourself but even with that change the perk would be D or C tier at best because there's just so many other better perks than this one that again it's only a one time use perk which I think are the worst kind of perks the only reason I'm not putting this in F tier is because I like the idea of being able to help yourself in a bad situation the thing is you lose just too much max HP and this is why the perk has gotta be E tier for me so next up we have everyone is a hero and this perk is actually really really good basically after being hit by the watcher uh, you gain three energy charges so one charge is equal to 15 seconds of past time and three charges are effectively 45 seconds of time that you were chased but you did not get chased and three charges is a ton and uh, while being in chase you get rid of your energy charges really fast so this perk really helps with still being able to fast vault even after a long chase this especially comes clutch if you have some synergy with your character for example um crow can be hit three times so she can activate the perk um, two times in chase uh, this is especially good on her because her generation of charges in chase is really slow so she's going to run out of charges really really fast another example would be godfather he can heal himself almost instantly after being hit by the killer and that consumes two energy charges if you just gain three energy charges you can heal yourself and you have another one on top of it for the killer doing an offensive action against you which is actually really good um, the only problem with this perk 
is that after you drop below a certain percentage of your max HP, you will always be instant downed. And not even your shield will protect you. Basically, after you are under that percentage health, you cannot longer use this perk unless you have some more shield for some reason. But otherwise, the perk is really good for everyone that needs charge regeneration in chase and that's almost every character. In fact I cannot think of a character that this perk would be bad with right now. I think this perk is in a really good spot right now and should stay that way uh, for as long as the game is being in this current state as well. But because of the um, drawback with the one hit down I can only put it in A tier since it gets kinda useless after that point. So next up we have Crow's perk called Crow's Requiem. Basically, um, if you heal a person uh, that is in digital form for 20 HP points, you will have 1.2 extra max HP on yourself. And it is as bad as it sounds, it's unreliable not every person in digital form will come to you, so this is also really, really bad. In the background footage, I will showcase um, how it works, and I will even show a bug where I heal someone um, for a little more than 20 HP, and um, it injures me. I'm injured! Oh my god, it still makes the bug where I'm injured! Oh my fucking god! It does increase my max HP, but it doesn't heal me for the same amount, so it, it's leaving an HP gap between my HP and my max HP, which makes me bleed, and the killer can track me, and I make noise, and this is really, really, really bad. Don't play with that perk, ever. I heard it was pretty broken, but then it got nerfed, uh, and now it's at this point where it's just garbage, and I want this perk to be completely reworked. Straight to F tier. This is by far the worst perk in the game right now. So this might be where um, me and other good players um, have a different opinion on. Uh, some say Shadow's perk is the worst perk. My opinion is it's this perk. And um, if you have some better reasoning uh, than I do, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm really curious if uh, someone thinks different than me. Um, the thing is, the number should not be buffed, because I think reversing the progress of the killer on on the damage he did is a really unhealthy thing for the game, because the killer can also not kick the warehouses to regress their progress, right? Uh, we don't have that. That's a Dead by Daylight thing. We don't have that in Gold Express. So I want to see this perk com uh, being completely reworked. I heard an idea of um, a perk that would show the killer's aura if he is close to um, data warehouses. Um, which I think could be a pretty nice idea. Since the killer can also fake virus the warehouses. But till it is not reworked, I recommend you to never pick this perk up. Straight F tier. Nothing else to say. So the next perk is from Bard and it's called Self Protection Spray Paint Can. And um, I really like this perk. So this perk activates after being hit two times and then you get a 70 HP shield immediately. It's really good for on Godfather for example because he can heal himself while being chased pretty easily. So the only reason I'm not putting this perk in B, A or S tier is because there's another perk that gives 90 shield and you only have to upload a cube uh, for it to be activated. And it does not uh, make you lose max HP for it to work. So I would like to see this perk buffed because at the moment it's not really worth running it on every character. And I think viability uh, through all the perks is really important. But right now there are just the S tier perks and some A tier perks that are really viable in the current meta. 
of the game. So this is C tier for me. But um, I've got an idea how to make it viable. After every uh, after every time you're getting hit, you gain a little amount of shield that will not save you from being downed, but it will prevent your max HP from draining really fast if you don't have your shield up. But until it's not buffed, it's getting in a solid C tier. Um, you can pick it up, you can try it out. Um, I like playing with this perk even though it's not super good. But if you want some variation in your gameplay, this is definitely a perk you want to pick up. Next we will talk about the digital form module. This perk is from Punch and it's also the latest perk from the game. So basically, after you upload the data cube onto a beta warehouse, you gain 70 extra shield. So you end up always with a 90 HP point shield because you always have a 20 HP shield by default. And this is additional. However, if you already have a shield that is greater than 30, this skill will not activate. An important thing to know is that you only have to do the last percentage of the data cube uploading. You don't have to upload the complete cube. So you can just come to a teammate's warehouse and just help them with the last percentage and you will get the full benefit, which I think is really, really broken. 90 health shield absorbs one entire hit from the killer and leaves you with a 25 HP shield left. So even if you get hit once and your shield should be gone, you still drain less max HP on the second hit than you would on the first hit without this perk. Which I think is really really broken for such little effort to get such a huge shield. This as you can think is the current matter and basically everyone is running that perk unless they don't have it. But that's rather unlikely because it's quite easy to unlock. Um, especially with the refill rewards that I showed you in the beginning and all of the ways that you can uh, earn the cash. So this is a straight S tier. Really broken, um, noob friendly, no drawbacks. This needs a nerf, definitely. So a way this should be nerfed is but that while uploading a data cube your shield slowly builds up to, I don't know, let's say 85, because that's the amount of damage that a, that one hit from the killer does, right? So let's say it can absorb an entire hit for basically holding your mouse down. And me as watcher and extractor player, I can see myself living with that change. But till then it will be in the absolute broken tier, so yeah, nothing else to say. This was the last extractor perk, so we'll move to, on to the watchers now. Alright, moving on to the killers. The first perk we are going to look at is the perk from Warden called Majesty. And this perk is quite unique, if you want to say it like that. Um, basically, the extractors have 80 seconds less time to extract. Which in itself sounds pretty solid. Uh, the thing is, you have 180 seconds of time to extract. So even if you use this perk, they still have 100 seconds left. Let me just show you what I think of this perk. This is bad really really bad first up it's a one-time use perk um it activates in the late game which is like the second worst thing because if you reach that point you basically lost already um and like enough survivors are left or whatever right um and in general i think late game perks are really unhealthy for the game like this is kind of like a no ad from uh, from Dead by Daylight, where you basically lose a game and you get an instant down on every survivor as killer, right? Um, but this is no ad in shit. It does nothing. So what I'm saying is, if you buff this perk, it will become like no ad, like kind of overpowered, late game, no effort, whatever. And 
And if it stays like this, it's never going to be picked up unless there's a new watcher and he's playing warden for the first time. No other perks, right? This is the only situation you need then. Um, or you are a Megwad that just recorded some footage for me for this video. So, thanks to Megwad at that point. I want this perk to be a complete rework. Just like I said, it's a late game perk. Late game perks are kind of toxic. If they're good, if they're bad, they're trash and they will never be used. Make them something like, um, I don't know. Um, for example, maybe first hacking a warehouse does not cost anything. Cause right now it costs two charges, which, which is really uh, a lot if you only have five at max. For Warden, this is not a problem. He has like eight by default. So um, maybe put this perk even on a different killer, cause the Warden definitely does not need it. The other thing you could do is make the energy efficiency better. That means it doing the Q speed up on the digi digital wall only drains half of a energy charge. So you can easily spam uh, your Q two times on a wall, practically instant building it, and only wasting one charge instead of three. Or doing only two charges instead of three, because uh, doing the building action actually already consumes one, and then uh, spamming the Q will drain the uh, one charge per per hit of the button, right? So um, something like that I would like to see in the game as well, but not for Warden, for every other killer, or even make the power only cause one charge instead of two, something like that, but not something that influences the late game. Otherwise, never pick this perk up until it's not reworked. Trash. Don't use it. So the next perk is protectiveness and it's the shareable perk of the geisha. And uh, basically what it does is um, if the extractor is doing a fast action, um, they not only leave a notification for the killer, but they also reveal their aura for 3 seconds. Um, as you can see in the gameplay, um, there's a crow going to an, into her teleporter and I can see that I won't reach her in time because she will just teleport away, right? So I just turn and focus on the next target. But like the other benefit that I often got in this game was um, that I could see other players in chase through the wall. And as you can see in the gameplay as well, I saw one of the players unblocking a wall and using the fast action and I was easily able to go from the other side and cut him off because he did not have any charges left uh, to vault back fast enough. This effect also stacks so if you do two fast actions uh, close to each other you will get a six seconds reveal which is really really good. So I think this is probably just like um, everyone is a hero a really balanced perk in my opinion. Uh, it's not too strong it's not too overpowered. It has no drawbacks though, unlike um, everyone is a hero. It always works. It's really reliable, but I cannot put it in S tier, because I don't think it is better than the next perk. So it is a solid A tier. So the next perk is from Fortress and it's called Universal Lock. Basically makes the default lock that is applied upon building a wall as killer it adds an additional 30 seconds to it. So this is actually not stated here. In the footage we can see that at least 36 seconds have passed till we don't know if the lock is removed. And where it got destroyed 100% is 42 seconds. So we already know it's more than 30 seconds but we don't know exactly what time. I have to um, make some more research on this but for now this should be enough info for you. This is actually really good uh, because of um, the character Punch, which I will cover in a different video. But basically he can destroy walls really fast and um, since the default block is not very long, you can imagine that that character kind of counters all of your blocked walls because he can just instantly destroy them again. Not instantly but like after a short time he can just destroy all of them again. Having these 36 seconds um, really helps uh, you lock down a player or other, other teammates um, unblocking the windows while someone else is getting chased. Uh, this will not happen with this perk and um, 
it is actually really good. Unfortunately, this does not happen often enough, so um, it kind of loses the value of it in a game where just no one is unblocking uh, the windows. Especially with new players, this is the problem where they don't um, engage with the terrain at all. But uh, the better the players get, the more useful this perk gets. Um, I put it in the C tier, because I think it lets needs a little bit buffing so it, it has value in um, every game you take it in and my idea for this is to uh, make the blocking action a tiny bit faster maybe 15% or something like that so um, you waste less charges and less time for um, blocking this also would fit the theme of the perk and I think it would be kind of nice to have in the game but even if it would have that buff, I would put it in B tier. Because um, I think tracking perks are the strongest kind of perks in this game. And um, therefore I will, at least on the killer side, put only um, the tracking perks uh, in S and A tier. It definitely has value if you um, don't know what to pick or if you don't have Geisha or Scarecrow. This is a good perk to pick up also on Warden or every other killer. So definitely try it out. So the last perk I'm going to cover for this video is Skirko's Requiem. Uh, as you can probably imagine this perk is from Skirko and it basically um, shows you the auras of all the extractors after you don't an extractor for 6 seconds. Um, which is really good like uh, this is probably my favorite perk and uh, it's super busted and um, it definitely needs a nerf uh, not gonna lie I will show some background footage of um, it being in use so you can understand what it does and um, there is one thing that I want to get out there um, this perk encourages players to slug because you don't have to execute them to get the aura reveal and the aura reveal is really long so um, if you just down a person and go for the next one you see um, the game will be over in a matter of minutes um, which is really unfun for the extractors and uh, is kind of a boring playstyle for the killer so um, unless you really need to slug which is really rare I hope you will not slug at all because I don't want this game to be as toxic as some games are in Dead by Daylight. With that said, I put this perk in the S tier. Um, I think the seconds, the reveal seconds should be reduced from 6 seconds to 4 seconds. Um, maybe um, even only showing the aura of the survivors uh, in a specific um, uh, distance to you or something. Um, because it's really really strong right now and I would like to see some vi um, viability um, for the other uh, perks as well because if this perk uh, gets a tier below every other perk will be a little bit easier to pick up because there's not this huge um, value gap between them uh, until it's not changed um, I recommend especially new players to pick up this perk um, it really helps and uh, it is S tier, if not S plus. So this wraps up this video. I'm sorry that it's so long. It's almost 30 minutes. Um, I still hope you enjoyed it and it was informative. The next guy will probably come out next week regarding a different topic. See you then.